Welcome to Raiders of the Lost Podcast, the ultimate film and TV podcast. We are your hosts, James and Anthony. And this episode will be on Harry Potter rankings with special guest George Carmi. And we are all in costume, so watch on YouTube or Spotify. Hello, witches and wizards. Welcome back to the show. We're super excited to be here talking about the Wizarding World of Harry Potter yet again. For the 17th time, because you know we love it so much. This is going to be a fun episode breaking down rankings that each of us have, as well as our guest here, George Carmi, who we had on a couple months ago for a State of Cinema episode. George, welcome to the show again. You're in studio, in, in person. person, in Los Angeles. Welcome. Thank you guys for having me. Yes, I'm here and... The first podcast you guys was my first ever podcast experience so it's nice to be back in studio with you guys and so while cool. we're in studio if you want to check it out on youtube or spotify video we are all dressed up in harry potter wardrobe i am dressed as dumbledore i'm snape and then george who are you and i am harry potter and make sure when you're talking just get into that mic nice yes of course yeah, yeah there you go get, see, get see, see like three inches away listen to your voice now so you talk Hello, hello. So much better, right? Get, 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 in, get in there. Right. Get in there in the microphone. Get in there, bro. Get in there, dog. So today we're going to break down each of our rankings of the Harry Potter franchise, and we're going to go through them eight to one and just roast each other on our lists and break people's hearts out there. And I figure maybe start off talking about the IMDb and Rotten Tomato scores for each ones, if you guys are cool with that. I think that's an amazing idea. So IMDb, the number one Harry Potter reviewed movie is uh, Deathly Hollows Part 2 at an 8.1. Wow. And then we have... Prisoner of Azkaban at 7.9, Goblet of Fire at 7.7, Deathly Hallows Part 1 at 7.7, Half-Blood Prince at 7.6, Order of the Phoenix at 7.5, Sorcerer's Stone or Philosopher's Stone, 7.6, and Chamber of Secrets, 7.4. Does that hurt, Jim? Does that hurt? I mean, I think it's a lot of recency he's got, bias. He's got a chamber poster behind him. I think that hurts. That's, there's a lot of recency bias in that. Come on. All the recent ones are the highest rated. Hey, that's a great point. Well, Azkaban's number two. Yeah, so that you just shot yourself in the foot with that one. I did, yeah. And then, <laughs> then we have the Rotten Tomatoes score. So Deathly Hollows Part 2 at 96% audience score. Azkaban is a 90%. Goblet of Fire is an 88. Half-Blood Prince, 84. Chamber of Secrets, 82. Sorcerer's Stone, 81. Order of the Phoenix, 77, and Deathly Hallows Part 1 is lowest at 78%. Wow. Before we get into the movies, what's everyone's favorite book? Just favorite book out of all of them. That's tough. Um, George, why don't you go first? Half-Blood Prince. Half-Blood Prince. Same. Sure. I'm going Half-Blood, Half-Blood Prince. Prince as well. Yeah. Prince. I think it's just really brilliantly written. Uh, the first half of it is insane, especially opening with the minister scene. I think it was just really well done in a mature evolution of J.K.'s writing. I think that... Overall, it's the best from start to finish book. For Plus, sure. we have so much Voldemort in yeah. that book. So in much, terms of yeah. Tom, Tom Riddle the memories. It's Voldemort yeah. origins, like learning through everything about him growing up and being a, an adult and adolescent, going to Hogwarts and everything, learning yeah. about the Horcruxes. I think Harry and Dumbledore's relationship is maybe my favorite part of the entire franchise, and it's heavily covered in the book, not so much in the movies compared yeah. to the book. Agreed. So I think Half Blood Prince has got to be the best one out of all of them. Yeah. Wow. It's so cool <laughs> that we all chose the same one. Twinning. <laughs> Are we triplets? He's our, he's our triplet, <laughs> except he's Greek, right? Uh, yeah, I'm Greek. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, so. it's, hey, we're all, we're all <laughs> part of the Roman Empire. I know, Greeks are Italians. So it's the same thing. It's the same thing. We like we like Mediterranean food and have big noses. Yes. Like, yeah. <laughs> Greasy hair. <laughs> <laughs> he looks Italian, too. You asked me hey, on that's... the first podcast if I was Italian because I kept banging my hands on my Yeah, dad. you spoke uh, like an Italian. <laughs> yeah. Very passionate. Well, in the last name, Carmi, ending yeah. in a vowel, it's very Italian, mm-hmm. even though we're half Irish. So we have the last name Devaney. We're actually half Scottish and English. Well, quarter Scottish. Get your facts right. Quarter Fake Scottish. News. <laughs> no, quarter Scottish. Quarter Basically English. Quarter, no, we're four percent English. Is it? Yeah, four percent. Oh, yeah. My mistake. Then it's, a majority is Irish. But anyways, this isn't about the genealogy <laughs> of blood of Anthony and I and DNA. Let's get to the Harry Potter rankings uh, and start with the bottom of each of our lists. And now, who wants to go first for where they rank the eighth best movie? But this isn't also. First of all, everyone's list is valid. If you're listening, your list is valid, okay? Don't let any of us tell you you're wrong because we're not going to. These are just our favorite picks. Everyone list, Everyone's list is different. Please except, don't attack us. Except for Anthony's. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony's is probably trash. I stand by mine. I'll go first. All right, you go first. So the, my least favorite Harry Potter movie is Order of the Phoenix. I think that it was uh, – I, I think for <laughs> – George just sighed. <laughs> for me, the tone, the tone never felt right. I, I love it. I love all the movies, but in terms of when you compare it to the other ones, the tone wasn't quite right. I'm not a big fan of the music that Nicholas Hooper did for it. Didn't feel, I mean, even though 
Um, we had Patrick Doyle did Goblet, and this plot finished out the series brilliantly. Hooper did a good job of Half Blood Prince, but I wasn't a fan of the music for Or the Phoenix. I think the the Dumbledore uh, Voldemort fight was good, but also I think the Death Eater Dumbledore's army fight can be a little campy, especially when they're glowing with the light. I'm not sure I was a big fan of like them arriving and just glowing like angels. It kind of looked like angels and demons fighting. And then also, I would say it was the Hall of Memories with all the with all the uh, the orbs. Super CGI, so too much green screen, too much CGI. When you compare it to the other films, not enough practical filmmaking for my taste. I'm sorry, I can't stop. I'm about to laugh because you're, is that why you're making those faces? You're you're talking you because of the beard. The beard, no, the beard is like affecting your voice. You're like talking. Yeah, it's with holding your, my lips down. I can't, I'm about to laugh. It's holding my lips. If you're yeah. watching on YouTube or Spotify, Anthony's Dumbledore costume is incredible. Incredible. Thank you. But, Thank but you, man. a lot of great points. I actually like Nicholas Hooper music in this. Ideally, we would have had John Williams for every single Harry Potter movie. Of course, they had to make the Star Wars movies, and he was busy with God those. God damn it, George. God damn it, George Lucas. <laughs> I would have loved to hear more John Williams in the Harry Potter franchise. But I think that I agree with you on the Order of the Phoenix with the white smoke because they are trying to counter with the Death Eaters and how they do the the black smoke flying around. I thought that was a little cheesy, but I, I think those are valid points, pal. And I also think that I think the use of CGI isn't as strong as any of the other films. I think the Dementor scene, it's a good scene in the opening, but it's a little, it kind of didn't feel like as realistic and believable as Quaron's uh, Dementors and Azkaban. So I think that the CGI didn't quite hold up to the other films for me. Yeah. What, do you, what do you think, George, about his, his pick? You'll see in a bit, I have order ranked a, a bit. A, a chunk higher actually i don't mind your critique on the score because i do think john williams's uh original harry potter theme is present throughout the entire series he, he's very influential on that part but i do think that score fits the kind of dark depressed tone of order of the phoenix a little better and my favorite aspect of Order of the phoenix is we do get to dive into the psyche of what it feels like to be harry potter what is it like to be this chosen one who has to fight voldemort like he has no other option and i think they dive into that aspect of his life very well which is something i adore um and a lot of people say this so it's kind of cliche it's one of the darker harry potter movies and that's just something i'm attracted to across all film just being a dark movie um so your last place ranking does hurt a little bit <laughs> i i respect everyone's opinion i also had to drop it down a, a peg for that voldemort shot where he's like <laughs> Voldemort for Armani <laughs> possessing uh, Harry but I like his point I like George's points too because it's you know Voldemort just rose at the end of the last episode and now the ministry is starting to be politically against Harry Potter and against Dumbledore and there, it seems like the isolation of everyone on the side of the good is just being shown even more and more and like Harry dealing with the scar hurting all the time then practicing occlumency and everything like that so I think that was really I like the Order of the Phoenix but I don't have it last but I don't have it that high George, what do you got for number eight? I have Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Ooh. At number eight. Oh. <laughs> I, oh. <laughs> Anthony's taking the mask off. He's I'm out so of here. Sorry. Anthony's out of here. <laughs> See you later. Every every time I tell someone that ranking, I get the exact reaction. Let me make this as clear as possible. I think Harry Potter is the most consistent franchise in film that we've ever seen. Maybe besides like Mission Impossible, if you exclude MI2, um, <laughs> it's not a bad movie. I just don't think it holds up as well at, you know, something like Chamber of Secrets or even Prisoner of Azkaban holds up. I think the dialogue can be a little corny and cringy at times. Um, Christopher, Chris Columbus did a beautiful job introducing us to this world. He did a beautiful job casting this incredible group of child actors. I think it's a great movie, but it's a movie I don't find myself rewatching as much as I rewatch, say, Order of the Phoenix or Prisoner of Azkaban or even Chamber of Secrets. Valid points. Interesting points. What do you think about that, Anthony? <laughs> Completely disagree. <laughs> <laughs> Vehemently disagree. <laughs> Vehemently. Look at Dumbledore stroking his beard out of there in rage. <laughs> I'll, get, I'll get into that later. But, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think I think uh, Sorcerer is a special one for me. Uh, I can't <laughs> <laughs> look at him. He's hard. <laughs> I disagree with everything you said. <laughs> no, but I think uh, John Williams' score in the production and what Chris did was amazing. Uh, and also the cast, the ensemble cast is fantastic. And just the introduction into the world, the fish out of water story. It's the only time it's a fish out of water um, for Harry. So I think just being the surrogate audience member with Harry introduced to the world is really special. I think, I think the yeah. child acting in Sorcerer's Stone is the worst. Oh, yeah, them. by so that's, far. That's what's most noticeable for me. That's why I don't have it like top three personally. Spoiler alert. 
But um, I, I still think Sorcerer's great. Yeah. But I don't have it last. But hey, it's your list, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> hey, I respect you. your opinion. I appreciate that. I respect, I respect that. it so much. I respect now, the hell out of it. My number eight is uh. definitely going to break some hearts. Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Ooh, now, this number is, eight. This is a wonderful book. The movie, it's still a great movie. It's still really great. I like it a lot. For me, it's the least rewatchable. I think Patrick, I mean, Mike Newell did a pretty good job jumping into the, direct, the director's chair real quick. However, I think that maybe I don't think he captured the tone of the book that well and the story going forward because obviously there was a tonal shift with Prisoner of Azkaban with Quaron that he kind of just went in a completely different direction. And then they brought that serious tone back and realistic, realistic tone back that Quaron, Quaron created with David Yates for Order of the Phoenix. So I think that it's kind of like out of nowhere in terms of the tone of the film compared to the rest of the movies and the, and the trajectory they were going in. I get it. I mean, Harry's getting chased by a drag, fights a dragon. I mean, you can't put that <laughs> number eight. I mean, come on. Also, I like the, the puberty themes. I like the uh, the kids are growing up and starting to date and having romantic interests. And that is like very easy to, easy to relate to as an audience member. I think that it's not my favorite by far, but I still think it's a, a jam-packed movie full of great action, great set pieces, uh, better performances, and then also the introduction of Voldemort. I think they really pulled it off really well. It's iconic. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, not Voldemort. iconic enough for you, though. <laughs> hey, man. I got to be true to myself. Hey, you are. Yeah, you are. I respect your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's not top tier for me. You'll see it's it's middle of the pack, but um, I, I think there are a lot of fantastic character moments in Goblet of Fire that can't just be ignored. I also think to uh, refute your point on Prisoner of Azkaban kind of being a tonal shift. It was compared to uh, Chamber of Secrets and Sorcerer's Stone, but I like the direction that Goblet of Fire took the Harry Potter franchise because we are seeing these characters mature in front of our eyes, and I think this is the movie where they all kind of go through the most. They all go through the most in terms of their relationships with one another, their love lives, like you mentioned, um, and then the whole final sequence. I'm such a sucker for that entire, the maze scene all the way up until the end. I think that's some of the best Harry Potter we've seen. Oh, in yeah. my defense, though, in terms of the book to film adaptations, I think it might be the worst of what of happens accuracy, in the book. accuracy, yeah. Of what I, happens, because there's yeah. so much, the book's huge. You know, they were yeah. going to originally make it a two-parter movie, but I mean, they didn't want to do it. They had to make money real quick, and they're making yeah. one a year. However, they miss, there's so much in the book of Goblet of Fire that's not even touched upon at all in the movie. And I know Half-Blood Prince does the same thing with the third act. They don't have the big battle that happens at Hogwarts when the Death Eaters come. There's no fight. But I think that Half-Blood Prince was still able to make a great adaptation, whereas Goblet of Fire, I think, in my opinion, is the worst adaptation from the books. Keep crying about it, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say, though, I would trade... Deathly Hallows Part 1 and 2, make it one movie, if we had the ability to get either Goblet of Fire or Half-Blood Prince, a two-part. Two, I, mean, I like Deathly Hallows as two movies. I like it as two movies. I think but it I, had to be. But I think Goblet's really good. I think it's definitely um, mid to top tier out of the entire film hit, filmography. All right, I, sure. I agree. Let's I move agree. into our number seven, guys. Where do you got, Anthony, ranked at seven on your <clears> list? I have Deathly Hallows Part 1. Now, I love the movie, and I really like not being at Hogwarts. I love the production and the cinematography. But it, the compared to the movies, it is it can be quite slow. It can drag, and that's just the natural pacing of the story when you split this book into two. There's kind of nothing to be done about that. And I do like how they split it into two because it was such an epic book. I don't think it would have worked as one movie. It would have been too rushed. Um, but I will say, out of all the movies, it is the slowest by far. And the dance scene is cute but like kind of weird and out of place, so the tone can be off a little bit. Uh, I think ultimately they did a great faithful adaptation. Uh, lots of great scenes with Voldemort, but for me, there's too much energy, uh, too much uh, entertainment value in the other films to rank this higher than them. I agree. George, what do you got for seven? I'm going to echo everything you just nice, said. Man. Because I have Double Door Proofs part one <laughs> at number seven. Um, I've been an advocate. I think Deathly Hollows, it's a massive book. There's a ton that needs to be fleshed out. As an audience member and someone who grew up watching Harry Potter, I would not have minded a three and a half hour movie. Cut down some of the two hours of part one. That could have worked. Yeah. Just because, like you said, there's a lot of moments of drag, a lot of moments that just kind of remove me from what's going on. You're coming up on the finale of this, this massive wizarding world. If you had given me a seventh movie that was three and a half hours, I don't think I would have cared at all. No, me yeah. either. Me either. And not to sound repetitive, but I have Deathly Hallows. Hey, 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 number seven. You know, I think the lack of Hogwarts does it for me to make 
to make me put it this low, you know, it's I think they don't even have a scene at Hogwarts in this movie besides maybe Snape at Hogwarts as the, yeah, the as headmaster. the headmaster maybe, but I can't think of really a scene that's really at Hogwarts in this movie because Deathly Hallows Part Two, when we get into the room of requirement, the theme, the old Harry Potter theme that we haven't heard in three movies comes out, and it's just like so incredible to be back there at Hogwarts. So I think the lack of being at the castle makes me put it this low and like it does get slow i understand it. it's setting up the second film which it's a is, penultimate yeah thing. exactly yeah. so it is what it is nothing against it it's still incredible filmmaking i think this one like half blood prince and then deathly Alice part one and two david yates really came into his own of really Found understanding the, style. the wizarding world yeah. and creating the style that he went to with the fantastic beast franchise that he started with order of the phoenix and mastered in half blood prince but it's just such a well-made movie at the same time it's like Hard to say, like, this movie's seventh on a list of eight, but it's it's still just n- not as close as the other ones. The thing with, with Order and with Half-Blood, he was still tr- trying to find his style, and then the Deathly Hallow style is the uh, Fantastic Beast style. Exactly, yeah. So this is where he kind of settled on, this is my look for filmmaking. I will, I will say, I... I... I don't mind that we were separated from Hogwarts and Deathly Hallows Part 1 Me as either. much as I think yeah. a lot of... I, I think it. it just makes the scale of, like, the wizarding world massive. It feels much more than Voldemort just trying to take over a high school, mm-hmm. yeah. which I think a lot of movies can kind of feel that way. Um, so I like seeing, like, all the ministry stuff, all the political aspect of the wizarding world. So I really didn't mind being away from Hogwarts. It was just the time we were away. It just happened to be... Moments yeah. of dread. Still a great movie. Great but I mean, breaking, great breaking great into movie. the ministry is That's awesome. such a fun yeah. moment. Yeah, yeah. Great, great, I, love that. I still have it at a four out of five stars yeah. on Letterboxd. Yeah, yeah me great too. Movie. Yeah. These are all like nine out of ten, <laughs> ten out of ten. <laughs> yeah. All these movies I yeah. adore. I watch them all the time, but like, you except know, for, except for Goblin. <laughs> <That's>, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually watched it recently. That's the most recent one I've watched, and I still have it eight. eight. <laughs> Let's move on to what are we on number six now. Number six, Anthony or Dumbledore over there. What do you got? Lit- no, no, yeah, yeah, we're six. six. Yeah, six. That's math. That's math. I got it. I got. It. I'll take it from here. <laughs> At number guy. six, I have Chamber of Secrets, which I find to be very entertaining. I think it's a terrific movie. I really love it, and it's hard. It's hard to rank these movies now as we're getting into the. At higher and higher on the list i love chamber but i'm putting it at number six i think just because the acting still isn't quite there for the kids uh, i like it i think for book to film adaptation it's extremely accurate as well uh john williams score is awesome it's got one of the best openings you have the car with the train there's so much that works for the film and i feel bad putting it at number six but in terms of ranking compared to the others i just can't put it as high as the others i respect that yeah. i think one of the strengths of Sorcerer Stone, Azkaban, and Chambers, their books are only 300 pages, like 350 yeah. pages. So it's easier to adapt that into a two and a half hour movie. So I think that's why the adaptations of those three movies are so book accurate. So I agree with that. I think Chamber might actually be the most book accurate adaptation. I think it is, it's yeah. up there for sure. I respect that, number six, you know. But I'm, I do love I adore it. I love it, yeah. yeah. I, I yeah I, I I respect your opinion. Thanks, um, thanks guys. <laughs> doesn't, so much res- doesn't, doesn't feel real though. So much respect in this room. <laughs> uh, my number six is Half Blood Prince. Ooh. Um, I I it's for the reasons the complete opposite reasons on why you love Chamber of Secrets. I think that it's just a massive book and so much needed to be fleshed out. And unfortunately for me, the movie fell a little flat. It felt more of like a quick Voldemort backstory and a quick introduction of the Horcruxes and then the ending obviously sets up Deathly Hallows part one and two but outside of that I think there was a lot of dead weight in this movie that could have been utilized significantly better we could have seen a lot of more characters have significantly more interactions with others just to make the story feel a little more worthwhile so that when you do get to that ending of Dumbledore dying leading into Deathly Hallows part one and the hunt for the Horcruxes it felt it would have felt a little more rewarding I do. I, every time I watch it, I always wish there were more Tom Riddle scenes, for sure. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's one of the weaknesses of that movie. It's still yeah. so well made. I yeah. love how the entire cinematography and artistic production is based on Rembrandt paintings, the artists. I think that looks. I think it's the best-looking movie of them all. It's, it's the best cinematography. It's, beautiful it's the only film. one that got nominated for an Oscar it for really cinematography. Is. They did an incredible yeah. job, and they but tinted the film and everything, too. To that, I don't think there's one Harry Potter movie that doesn't look amazing. Yeah, they true. All they all look, look, yeah, yeah, they yeah. all look great. That's the thing. And, but, like, there's so much things, like, little things, like, why isn't Tonks really in this movie he's she's the yeah. one that like saves yeah. harry from the train and stuff like that they replaced her with luna you understand like you can only have so many characters i guess in a two hour and ten minute movie and i think but... people responded well to luna audience wise yeah luna's great yeah. she's a great character and i i think yeah i i respect your opinion george thank you <laughs> now let's get to my number six 
I'm I putting... don't respect your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it is. Order of the Phoenix, I'm putting at number six. I think it has such a great villain with Dolores Umbridge in this movie, and technically the Ministry of Magic is a villain in this movie. Plus, But I think the lack of Voldemort being in the story in the movie really makes it less exciting in a lot of ways. And Dolores Umbridge is such a great villain, and the theme is so incredible that Nicholas Hooper came up with that, like, I kind of hate watching her in moments because she's so evil and sinister, and like I hate her so much that I sometimes like I don't even want to watch this movie because she's in it. But that's like such a great villain. But other than that, it's really well made. It's David Yates' first movie in the Harry Potter franchise. I think it's the least exciting in a lot of ways. Even though we have a lot of serious in this movie, this is serious best movies. It's the most screen time he has in any of the films. Unfortunately, it's also when he meets so his cool demise. In it. Uh, you wish he could have survived more. But yes, Gary Oldman's awesome in this movie as Sirius Black. I think the the battle between the Death Eaters and the Order of the Phoenix was kind of lackluster and underwhelming, especially the, the and the kids at the Ministry of Magic. It's so big and detailed yeah. in the book, but they really don't do as much things that happen in the book. And all they score to like get the prophecy, and that's about it. That's all that happens really in the in the movie compared to the books. Whereas they have like a whole maze. There's of stuff all sorts of things yeah, they have going to get through. All sorts yeah. of stuff in the Ministry of Magic. So yeah. I think I think the third act was pretty underwhelming. The battle with Dumbledore and Voldemort is sick, though. It saves the movie, I think. Yeah, that really yeah. does save the movie. And then I love the the final sh- moments with the uh, possession of Harry <sighs> and, <laughs> and and driving Voldemort out of his body. So I think that's a powerful ending. But just the Ministry of Magic sequence really kills this movie for me. I agree. I think the third act is also why I ranked it as last. Because the third act was it was cool, but also it was pretty lackluster. Until Dum- Dumby and Voldy fought. Then it was like, oh, hell yeah, let's go. <laughs> Yeah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, we're gonna we'll talk about it more when I get to my ranking. I, I think you guys will not like where I put this, but hey, I'll, I'll respect whoever. <laughs> as long as it's not number one, bro. It's, it's, it's not, it is not number one, but I, I cannot respect higher. that. But the thing with but Order of the Phoenix, it is like fun at the same time. It's more the probably, the, the twins are great. Yeah, in the, the twins. Yeah. yeah, Fred and George are great in this movie. We have Dumbledore's armies getting formed too. Yeah, the, something about Dumbledore's army that I wish was in the movies was the gold coins that happens yeah. in the book and stuff yeah. like that. That I wish he could have he could have snuck that in there, in there yeah. somehow. The Room of Requirement is also a great moment yeah. that we discover Harry discovers it and neville finds it for them all and so i like the room for room of requirement a lot but this one i'm still you know putting number six i think it's pretty respectable for that movie that's not bad all right moving on to number five yeah i have for the fifth best harry potter film goblet of fire this movie is epic they did a terrific job with the triwizard tournament i think all the cast did a tremendous job i love all the hair there's so much hair in this movie there's so many funny <laughs> memes. Much. Yeah. There's so many memes of Harry with the hair yeah, in this yeah, movie. Yeah, it's yeah. like like nobody, and there's this Dean Radcliffe in Goblet of Fire. His <laughs> hair's just like everywhere. Yeah. yeah. I like the school dance. I love Harry trying to talk to Cho, and he's so terrible at it. And then all the Triwizard Tournament events are fantastic. I love the dragon scene. I love the mermaid, mer people scene. And then I just think they did a, a really standout job of creating the look of Voldemort. It really came down to this team to figure out how Voldemort would look. Casting Ray Fiennes was genius. He's perfect. But I think the design of the character, they didn't go like in the books. They didn't make him super lizard-like. They didn't give him red eyes. They didn't give him uh, crazy teeth. Uh, they made him more human, which it made the audience, I think, relate and connect to him as a, a human being rather than like a living monster. And so I think that overall, you have to commend the team for doing a fantastic job designing the most important character besides Harry Potter in this franchise. Yeah, that's a great point. The third act of this movie is epic. Once they get out of the maze, this movie is incredible. I think the maze for me is underwhelming too because they a, didn't put so a lot, much in it. Yeah, yeah, a lot happens in the maze in the books that doesn't happen. We don't even have the storyline of Winky the house elf at all. We don't even have from Lu- Spew. Lu- yeah, Lu- yeah Lu- no, she's not part of Spew. That's well, Hermione's creating Spew in the book, but mm-hmm. like Winky's not part of it. Uh, Dobby's a lot in the book. He's not even all. He's not, not even the movie at all. I don't not think at all. But a fire. Sirius is in the book a lot too, but he only has the scene in the fireplace. Yeah. So things like that make me put this last in, on the, my list because of how much they had to leave out. But again, it's a huge book, one movie. Disappointing with a lot of sequences, but they yeah. just kind of just chopped so much stuff up. I will say for me, the maze is definitely the most underwhelming scene because it's just they just made it just the maze in the movie, and then the vines can like grab you, and that's it. Whereas there are so many obstacles in the book that they had to get through. So I would say the maze. I, I remember watching it as a kid, being like, "Oh, here's this part's gonna come up next," and then that didn't happen. And then, yeah, it's just some vines. Then there's the here's the riddle, and they didn't do the riddle. And I was like, "Ah, oh, man, they didn't do much at all in the maze." Yeah, and 
there wasn't that much Barty Crouch Jr. compared to the book as well. Either. Oh, true. You know, yeah, we yeah. got more of him in yeah. the book. And David Tennant, I think, is awesome as Barty Crouch Jr. So they, Mad Eye's amazing, though. Yeah, Mad Eye's great. Brendan Gleeson steals the show as the new character, I think. He's, yeah. he's terrific. It's a great, great movie. It's yeah. a great story. The, this might be the second best book in the franchise, too, but for me. You know, mm-hmm. I but I respect you putting it at number, what, four, you said? <laughs> five. Five. Yeah, number five. It's, it's commendable. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> what do you got, George? My number five, I have Chamber of Secrets. Respect um, that. Respect that. I, I completely agree with you. With you said earlier, I think it's arguably the best translated book to film. Um, I think the development of these characters from basically being campy and corny and Sorcerer's Stone moving on to being full-blown, somewhat mature, young adults understanding the weight of the situation that they're in. Um, I think there's a lot of fantastic action set pieces, especially in the actual Chamber of Secrets. Tom Riddle coming out is some of my favorite dialogue back and forth between him and Harry. Um, and it's also uh, just one of the Harry Potter movies I find rewatching more than most. I think it's, it's got really, a great score too. It, yeah. yeah. John Williams score is great. I the think Chamber it's the best score of the whole awesome. franchise yeah. for yeah. sure. It's really incredible. Awesome. Because and, and then they, the, they, the uh, acronym that Tom Riddle reveals just yeah. iconic. It's yeah. so good. Great twist. An amazing production design. But the Chamber of Secrets and then also the bathroom is fantastic. Yes. I mean, it really opens up. And then you got Gildery Lockhart is it's he's such a great character and um I, I love that character and his theme is terrific it's it's amazing yeah we'll talk yeah. more about chamber secrets because it is i think it's a special movie for sure but my number five is deathly hollows part two ah. which i think is still an incredible film it's bombastic it is the ending of the franchise and they really did a great job adapting it obviously you would have wished to have the ending of Voldemort and Harry battling and dueling in the Great Hall in front of everybody instead of just like an empty courtyard. But, I mean, it's the Battle of Hogwarts. It's incredible, not to mention breaking into Gringotts, which is so exciting. So this movie's so well made. It's like maybe top four like in terms of production, how well this movie's executed. It opens, and I mean, the Gringotts happens in the first act. It's yeah, crazy. It's nonstop yeah. action adventure. This That's like a movie. climax in any other movie. It might be the most entertaining of them all. You know, it's very fast-paced and exciting, and, you know, we have Voldemort under discovering that Harry is after the Horcruxes and he's going to Hogwarts. So, like, ending at Hogwarts is incredible. It's, it's an incredible movie, but I'm still putting it number five on my list because because the next four that I have, I just love so much more. Hmm. Interesting. But I still love this movie. I kind of respect that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I respect that. All right, all right. Well, since we've done four, how about we'll go to our intermission. Let's do it. And then we'll come back and finish up with the final four rankings. Sounds good. All right. Let's do it. Before we continue, the best way to support Raiders of the Lost Podcast is to tell your friends and family members about us if they love movies and TV. Use our coupon codes and become a patron at patreon.com slash Raiders of the Lost Podcast. For as little as $2, every patron has access to a weekly bonus episode. $10, $25, and $100 tier patrons get access to our Discord where we interact with you and have watch parties. $25 and $100 tier patrons get a personal episode you pick the topic we'll do it for you also 100 dollars to your patrons get their own personal watch party you get to be an executive producer at the end of every main episode and after three months of being in this tier you get to come on the show for a fun guest segment patreon allows us to do the show full-time so thank you so much for your support raiders of the lost podcast is brought to you by our good friends at manscape.com use our coupon code raiders of the lost at checkout you'll get 20 percent off and free shipping worldwide from manscape.com get their lawnmower 4.0 groomer it's the ultimate accessory to your grooming needs it has a 7000 rpm motor it's skin safe to the touch so you won't nick anything down there it's waterproof has a built-in light wireless charger you can use this thing in the shower in the dark it's incredible Manscaped's Boxer Briefs 2.0 just came out this year as well. And my goodness, are they comfortable. They come in really cool designs as well, but they got a little extra space for your junk, so you'll be very comfortable all day long wearing their briefs. Manscaped also carries 2-in-1 shampoo, conditioner, body wash, deodorant. None of their products are used with any parabens or bad ingredients. They're made in the USA. Highly recommend getting their stuff. It's gluten-free and vegan as well. Go to manscaped.com, use our coupon code Raiders of the Lost at checkout. You'll get 20% off and free shipping worldwide. Our other amazing sponsor is MoviePosters.com. Use our special promo code Raiders10 to get 10% off your order today. MoviePosters.com has a gigantic selection of pretty much every movie and TV show 
imaginable in their poster library, as well as all sorts of options for sizes, framing, and even backlighting for your poster needs. So whatever your needs are, MoviePosters.com has you covered. We have a bunch of these posters on our set, as well as decorating our home and bedrooms. They are high quality, the best money you can pay for, while still being very affordable. Again, head on over to MoviePosters.com and use our promo code Raiders10 to get 10% off your order today. All right, gentlemen, let's begin our movie quotes competition. Our, our <clears throat> intermission will start the movie quote competition. I'll go first. Are you ready? I'm ready. There's children throwing snowballs instead of throwing heads. They're busy building toys and absolutely no one's dead. There's frost on every window. I can't believe my eyes. <clears throat> and in my bones, I feel the warmth that's coming from inside. All right, Daddy Alfred. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. Thanks. Hey, thanks. great job singing. Thanks, pal. <laughs> Do you know it, George? I have no idea. <laughs> Nightmare Before Christmas. Oh, uh, he's Jack, Jack the Jack Skellington. Yeah. Yeah. What's Jack this? Skeleton. What's this? <laughs> <laughs> I have to update myself on Tim Burton filmography. Dude, they, oh, when was yeah. last time you watched that movie? A long time it's ago. It's incredible. I watched it. I wa We watched it every year pretty much for Halloween yeah. and, or for Christmas. We watched it a lot as kids, though. It's every, still it's For so Halloween incredible. and Christmas. It makes, me, yeah, it makes me miss the quality of kids' movies and how good they were. <laughs> what are you saying, man? <laughs> I mean, they're not the same. <laughs> There's never going to be a movie like this again for oh, yeah, coming yeah. from Disney. Yeah. Uh, all right, what's your quote? Yeah, what do you got? All right, I'm nervous this might be too easy for you guys, but we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> it's too bad she won't live, but then again, who does? Hmm. Oh. Yes, I stumped what you What is guys. this? Too bad I, she but then again, who does? This sounds so goddamn familiar. Can you say it one more time? It's too bad she won't live, but then again, who does? It's a very deep quote. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very deep movie. What is this? Dude, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw my phone off the wall when he tells us. <laughs> uh, I'm stumped. Um, stumped. I got nothing. I can't I can't think of it. It is Blade Runner. God oh! damn it! God damn it! Great quote. He says it at the Thank end. Thank you. Yes, he does. Oh, it does? Yeah, he says it. He says it to uh, yep, Deckard. Deckard. Okay. <clears throat> this is two people talking. Tears like tears in the rain. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Attention, whoever you are, this channel is reserved for emergency calls only. No fucking shit, lady. Does it sound <laughs> like I'm ordering a pizza? <laughs> oh. Do it one more time. I know this movie. Attention, whoever you are, this channel is reserved for emergency calls only. No fucking shit, lady. Does it sound like I'm ordering a pizza? <laughs> Best Christmas movie of all time. Facts. Correct. Facts. Correct. Die, Die hard. hard. Die hard. <laughs> Great job, guys. Great quote. All right. Guess this movie release year. Sleepy Hollow. Oh, you just watched, you just it. watched yeah, this. Me. I'm gonna go with nine. I'm going 1998. I'm going 1999. 1999. It is. Ah. What a year that was. What a year. And I just watched oh, that yeah. last week. It is 99. <laughs> I think it's a really underrated movie. I really do think it's underrated. Movie. I think it's, it's very terrific. atmospheric. It kind of yeah. makes you feel claustrophobic because he uses like fog and yeah. you know smoke so well with these horror movies. Isn't Christopher yeah. Walken great? Yeah, <laughs> he has no the lines of dialogue. <laughs> He just got sharp. He's, he's just going like. Ah! <laughs> I love Plus, it. when you watch that movie, you can tell that it heavily influenced Guy Ritchie when he made Sherlock Holmes. Oh, for like, sure. Hands yeah. down, it looks a lot like really similar. The wardrobe, production design, the color schemes, everything. Did okay. you have that plan before I told you that I watched it last week? What the the, the reference? Yeah, no, no, Sleepy Hollow. No, no, oh, no, yeah, I did this this morning, bro. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's just a coincidence. That's a weird coincidence. <laughs> second weird coincidence today. <laughs> so weird. All right, what's your uh, release here? Uh, I'm going a little tougher. Uh, I'm going Andre Tarkovsky's Stalker. 1987. 1978. No, no, it's not that old. 87. 19, You're not four. 19, is it 81? 81. 79. 70, 79. Oh, 70, it is that old. Yeah, it that's a great old. movie. It's a fantastic great choice. movie. I watched it for the first time like a year ago. It was incredible. Finally. I, I, I was, it I was is like, a great movie. Blew my mind. Unfortunately, it killed him. Yeah, because they really filmed in those areas. In radiated areas. They filmed it twice. And the actor, the actors were there too, right? Yeah, Didn't so one they, of them have complications as all well? All of them did. Yeah. They all had early deaths. Um, wow. They filmed the, the entire movie there, got back, checked the footage, and all the film was ruined because of the radiation. Because they were just leaving the film where they were filming. And so they had to film the movie twice. I so if anyone's unfamiliar, that. they filmed it in a, a radiation zone. Yeah. And it's, that's why the movie's incredible. Yeah. That's where it's about these characters yeah. that go there to explore, basically. There's a secret zone that they're trying to find. That movie's just crazy. so good. Man. I, right. that, that makes, that's like an out-of-body experience when you watch that movie. All of his movies. Yeah, I can't recommend all his movies are like that. enough. Okay. Guess this movie release here. Robin Hood. R the Russell Crowe one? No, the Alan Rickman one. 
Kevin Costner as Robin okay. Hood. I went Alan Rickman. We need a little, we need a little specificity here. Yeah, I, I was going to. I was thinking okay. Russell Crowe too. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, they're both just called Robin Hood, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. yeah. I forgot that Kate Blanchett was in that movie. She yeah. was. Yeah. Bad role. <laughs> <laughs> she got brown hair. I'm like, is that Kate Blanchett? <laughs> shouldn't have taken that role. That, movie was, that whole movie was just uh, paycheck, bro. Paycheck. Yeah. <laughs> we love Ridley, but, you know. Anyways, he misses sometimes. Robin Hood with Alan Rickman. He plays the Sheriff Nottingham. 1988. I was going to go a little later. No, no, no. 1992. Yeah, I was going to go 93, 94. 94. Which is it, man? I'm going to say 93. <laughs> 91. Ah, pretty close. Pretty close. Nice try, guys. Respectable. <laughs> Respectable. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Movie pop quiz time, gentlemen. How many Tim Burton movies has Danny Elfman scored? Uh, <laughs> shit, a ton. Too um, many. It's quite a lot. It's so many. It's quite a few. I think it's almost every movie he's done. Might be. I'm gonna go with sixteen. I don't George. I'm not guessing. I can't even name Make 16. a guess. Fourteen. Seventeen. Ah oh, What been. hasn't he scored? Oh my god. Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> you didn't even look into that? I'm sorry. I didn't know there was gonna be a second compounding question to this that I had to do research for. It's my goddamn question. It's okay, I forget you. <laughs> George, pop quiz, your turn. All right. I fear this might be a bit easy, um, but we are heading into Halloween spooky season, so it's a horror-related question. What was the first horror movie to win an Oscar? Silence of the Lambs. Yeah. It's too easy. Silence of the There's only yeah, been I figured f- that yeah. was going to be too easy. It's okay, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, I've seen that movie 20 times, so I know it really well. Has any other horror movies won an Oscar? It's the only one. Uh, for best picture. best picture. For Best Picture, oh. it's the only one. Get Out won yeah. for a screenplay. screenplay. Yeah. Yeah. Only five horror movies have been nominated for Best Picture. Isn't that yeah. insane? Well, Exorcist was nominated for sure. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what the others are. Yeah. Who there's, cares? It's, it's such a shame that they hate yeah. on horror movies in sci-fi such and the Academy because we because they're some of the best movies of all time. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Come on, man. Okay. Here's my quiz question: What rapper did Alan Rickman co-star with in the medical drama Something the Lord Made? This is a TV show or movie? It was an HBO movie back in like early 2000s. Most deaf. Most deaf is correct. Yeah, should, wow. You gotta let him guess. Oh, sorry. I would, I would sorry. have got that. <laughs> would not have guessed that. LL Cool J. <laughs> uh, all right, cool man, got that. Nice job. All right, who we got for uh, haters this week, Anthony? Are, we any, actually we haven't subscribed. We haven't filmed for a week, so we got a ton. I so love, bear I with me, real haters. I love this segment. <laughs> we have we have uh, one real hater, but like we have some great unsubscribes. All right, <laughs> this is great. I I love them all. One second, let me pull him up. Okay. Mike, the Greek, wrote, Terrible trigger discipline, James. Unsubscribe, because you're, like, pulling the triggers in your photo. <laughs> With Rod Fuzz. Yeah. <laughs> also, DeMeo wrote, uh, M1911s haven't been standard issue since the late 70s. Unsubscribed. What was that? Your handguns. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> With the orange This sticks. one's great. Je- no, Tra- those are Desert Eagles. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. Travis Ryan wrote, I just walked into my local Jiffy Lube asking about a Raiders coupon. Thanks for making me look stupid, guys. Oh, yeah. Unsubscribe. Well, that made a joke about that, yeah, right? Yeah. We, we made a joke that Jiffy yeah. Lube was a sponsor. Yeah. What, what was that on? I, was, I, I can't I remember. I think it was a movie news episode. That was a funny riff. Yeah, it was movie news. <laughs> Jiffy Lube slash Raiders. <laughs> Joshua Setledge wrote, I am an unsubscribing agent <laughs> in our Point Break point episode. Break. <laughs> and then a Rhino Van Eckhold, Eckhold wrote, uh, so you mixed up John Wick's car is not the same as Johnny Utah's. Oh, there's a lot of hate on that. And uh, it's one year off. Yeah, you got a ton of hate for that. Yeah. But Rhino Van, he's just kidding. He wrote, "Damn, bro, it's not the same car." Unsubscribed. Yeah, that was a nice one. But I got the. I was a seventy instead of a sixty-nine, and people lost their minds. They lost their minds. Yeah. They'll take their cars. Right? Like, the car talk. Right? Car talk is intense. Yeah, what a bunch of hacks. Don't post anything about cars. Not you will right. get destroyed. Or guns. One time we said we said clips instead of magazines, and it went they, viral. They but, like, died. They, got, they couldn't yeah. take it. All right, this is my favorite one. Mason Kunstler wrote, uh, he actually won our movie poster giveaway contest, but James spelled his last name wrong. Unsubscribe. Sorry, pal. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Jim got a hater because he called Taylor Swift a pop star. <laughs> and then uh, Matthias Gregory, this guy, wrote, pop star? Why not Grammy winner? <laughs> it's like, it's just both. Yeah, it's, <laughs> who hasn't won a Grammy at this point? <laughs> what pop star hasn't won a Grammy? For real, for real. Uh, Gator 9696 Gay- Day 378 of asking for Darth Jar Jar Binks unsubscribed. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best one. DeMeo wrote, when you were talking about models making the leap into acting, you mentioned Charlize Theron. 
you fail to mention that she is a Marvel star. The disrespect, unsubscribe. <laughs> All right, that's a good inside joke because yeah. we talked about once how there's an article that said Marvel star Kate Blanchett in the, promoting her new movie. Yeah. And it's like, dude, she has two Oscars. She's won <laughs> one Marvel movie. She won Marvel movie. For 30 minutes. <laughs> She has 30 minutes of screen the, time. Yeah. Oh my god. Uh, it's so like it's an ongoing joke now. <laughs> Marvel star Chelly's Theron, two minutes of screen time. That's what Not they're even. gonna use for the tar promotion. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I can't wait Sad. to see that movie. Very I'm excited so excited. Yeah. We have a great review from a tours. Um, you guys are great. I listen to you guys every day when I'm working or have some time to kill. Keep up the great work. PS in the Scarface review, you didn't mention that there were Scarface blankets. Unsubscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, pal. But Next thank, time, yeah. Thanks for the review. That was James's fault. Yeah, it's totally my <laughs> fault. I'll fall on top of that grenade. On this day in film history, today is October 17th. In 1888, Thomas Edison, Tommy Eds, Tommy uh, Boy, filed a patent for the optical phonograph, the first movie kind of going on. Uh, 1957, musical film Jailhouse Rock from Elvis Presley premiered in Memphis, Tennessee. In 1968, Bullet, starring Steve McQueen, Very was released. Movie. Love that movie. One of the best car chases of all time. In 1997, I Know What You Did Last Summer and The Devil's Advocate are released. In 2003, the first Texas Chainsaw Massacre reboot was released. That was the first reboot, right? Yeah, 2003. With Jessica Biel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, 2014, Fury and Birdman were released. And happy birthday to the late Rita Hayworth, you might remember from Shawshank Redemption, Eminem, and Felicity Jones. My streaming recommendation for this episode is The Exorcist on HBO Max. It's one of the all-time greats in the horror genre and just movies in general. Great pick, man. Thanks, man. I recommend The Invisible Man, the 1933 original. It's absolutely amazing. Still holds up today. And watching this movie, I was like, man, how do they do this effect? And I, I read about it like a couple months ago. I can't remember. But... Well, it's, they filmed him in a black backdrop with uh, his like face and hands covered okay, in yeah, black. So, so, so then they can like, put yeah, yeah. Then they can put that over the film. But like even today, like I was watching it in today's standards. I'm like, this still holds up and it looks amazing. Nice. That's great. And my film recommendation is Kiyoshi Kurosawa's Cure, a very haunting, atmospheric, psychological horror film. Figured I would give out horror since we are in October. Spooky. Um, yes, sir. Don't know where that's available to watch. I'm sorry. <laughs> You'll find I didn't somewhere. prepare that part. Uh, Movie7.com. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I use. Great streaming site. All right, guys. Let's get back into our Harry Potter rankings list. So far... We've done four each. Let's just rename our list Recap. one at a time. So mine, bottom going up, I have Goblet at eight, Deathly Hallows Part One at seven, Order of the Phoenix at six, Deathly Hallows Part Two at five. George, what about you? I have Sorcerer's Stone at eight. I had Deathly Hallows Part One at seven, Half Blood Prince at six, and Chamber of Secrets at five. Dumbledore. And I Order of the Phoenix at eight, Deathly Hallows Part One seven, Chamber at six. And Goblet at five. Great job, guys. Hey, now, hey. let's start off with our number four on each of our lists with Anthony. What do you have at number four on your ranking? At number four, I have Deathly Hallows Part Two. Wow. I thought it was a terrific conclusion to the story. I thought they just nailed it. It was so much fun. It was epic. Very tragic with Snape. I thought I like how they framed it around Snape. He opens the film. And with that scene of him looking out off the window at Hogwarts. I think that it was so funny as well. There was no humor in, in part one. And there were some great moments of humor in the second part. But filmmaking's terrific. Uh, the final battle is amazing. But I can't put it up higher because the Voldemort-Harry battle, for me, kind of the same thing with order. It was underwhelming. I liked I liked the, the standoff in the courtyard. I thought it was interesting. But I loved in the book how everyone's watching it take place. I love how... Harry is just, like, embarrassing Voldemort, just, like, get throwing out all the info. And Voldemort's like, how does he know all this? And Harry's like, yeah, I got you, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> got him. <laughs> but doing it in Am front I of... Am I being punked right now? <laughs> Ashton. Is Ashton here? Um, but doing it in the Great Hall with everyone watching. So everyone can see Voldemort die. I think it was with the, the perfect ending. With the movie, not seeing Voldemort die and seeing him dissolve... I didn't like that because when you see just his dead corpse, it's like, oh, he's dead. And then also to have everyone see just the dead corpse, it gives them like a catharsis of like this evil is gone. He's gone forever. He's really dead. When he dissolves, it kind of be like maybe he's dissolved and his spirit's still somewhere. But I think when he's dead, dead in the book, it's done better. Does he... Doesn't he fade away in the book as well? I don't think so. I'm pretty sure. No, it's just his corpse. Is it just a body? Just yeah, just his corpse. His, his, that's why I think it's better. 
And then um, also the, the battle, I like when he's chasing him around the castle, but also the straps, like wrapping Harry up in straps. And it's like, bro, why don't you just like Avada Kedavra him? You're like grabbing him and still taunting him. There are things added to the scene to extend it that I think didn't really work. So for those reasons, I can't rank it up super high. I think when we talked about that, those moments in our Deathly Hallows episode, because we did an episode in every single movie. Oh, we, yeah. We said we, we theorized that they had moments like that for the trailer to sell the movie because the trailer featured that battle between Harry and Voldemort just like running through the castle which happens in the book but like like you said strapping him with ropes he's like he is tied up with ropes right now how are you not killing Harry Potter right now but like that's just a stab him that was in the trailer <laughs> those moments were in the trailer where they're together and they fall off the building together so I think they they added those for just an action-packed third act battle yeah, but all, to just, sell the movie with the trailer but just Harry taking complete control of the situation from Voldemort is really the strength of the the finale I think of the book and Voldemort just being completely vulnerable, which you hadn't seen before. I agree. Because yeah. that's a really big moment for Harry to get closure on everything, too, yeah. because he's figured everything out mm -hmm. and the Elder Wand and everything like that and how he's not using all the... He's not using the ring to yeah. be invulnerable to death. So I think I agree with you. Mm -hmm. Totally disappointed by it not being in front of everybody. But otherwise, I think it's a fantastic movie. Yeah. I think it's terrific. Yeah. yeah. I never... I did, so I hadn't finished Deathly Hallows before watching part two. So the movie will kind of always be like my original. Oh. Um, so all of these criticisms, I don't really... Obviously, I would have much preferred The Great Hall with everyone watching oh, yeah. and watching Harry just absolutely maul this guy. But <laughs> <laughs> That's great. But like having not finished the book or even started at the point of Deathly Hallows part two being released... I was fine with what was executed because, like you said, it's just massive, grand scale movie splitting up into part one and part two. This is the only reason that I do enjoy the part one and part two because they just get right into it. You open with Snape, you get right to Gringotts, then they're at Hogwarts. And, it's insane. And then you're yeah. there. Like it's an hour and a half of conclusion and just this massive, grand scope film. Cinematically, it probably works better, and also not just for trailers, but marketing-wise, just having them to in the courtyard. It's a cool gives poster. Gives them the ability yeah. for posters. Cool exactly, poster. so better posters, better banners, better marketing. I think that went into it as well. And the studios yeah. really think about that at the same time when they're mo making movies. And they executed yeah. Snape perfectly. Yeah. Yes, all, Snape was all great. Of Snape. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Cool. All right. What do you got for four, George? <laughs> cool story, bro. <laughs> <laughs> My number four is Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Uh, taking that book and translating into the big screen, I think, is the most daunting task of any book to film I've seen. Um, and I think they did it beautifully. It's just grand in scope. I think they executed the Triwizard Cup brilliantly. I think the tension was there. The emotion was there. They had the ongoing love story. There was uh, a lot of character development between Harry, Ron, and Hermione. There was a lot of fantastic character moments. Um, they kind of grew as characters, which kind of led us into Order of the Phoenix and like this whole back half of the franchise so i think tonally the film does feel out of place i will admit that but i do think at the same time it sets the tone for a more mature second half of this franchise which i very much enjoy and then just the final voldemort coming back to life is terrific just incredible yeah. harry potter yeah i don't i don't envy steve cloves for not just having to adapt all these move books into movies but specifically goblet of fire into one movie because it was such a hard task that he didn't do order of the phoenix yeah. and they had to basically beg him back for the rest of the franchise with with a uh, half blood and deathly hollows because this was this seems like an impossible book to adapt into just one movie but he did a pretty good job you know i give it to him because there's so much that they cut out but they had to you can't have yeah. all that in there if they have fleshed out this book completely i think everything from the maze to the end could have been its own movie it could have been the best <laughs> this, movie this, this, well. is yeah. this is a, this is a yeah. book where it could work as like uh its own season of television yeah, yeah. to really get everything in there for sure because there's a lot i mean just not even just kind of the yule ball but the, all the tasks and the the challenges and the tri the tournament and everything mm -hmm. so there's, there's a lot going on there's a lot going but yeah on. Lot, i think i think it's hair. great yeah I respect that because I have it at five, so I'm pretty close. I respect that too. But you have, you have it at what? I, I, I don't Me. think you do respect it. <laughs> you, you scumbag. I don't think you guys respect mine. <laughs> well, what's your number four? Mine, no, I meant Goblet. But number four for me is Sorcerer's Stone or Philosopher's Stone. What Chris Columbus did with the first movie, just introducing everybody to the Wizarding World, was incredible, especially when you watch the movie. 
it's all practical. There's hardly any CGI in this movie besides the Quidditch matches and stuff like that and the troll, but a lot of the magic that's done in this movie is practical. That's why it really feels like real magic. Film's an illusion, but I think that the first one and the second one were the best at making it feel like this was a magic trick at the same time because of the lack of CGI. I mean, just the moment when Harry gets his wand at all of Vander's, that's one of the best moments in cinematic history, in my opinion, it's for especially for kids' movies or fantasy movies in general, but that's all practical. Wind, lighting, and just a feather floating, or a wand in the air. It's just absolutely incredible what they did. So I, I think wonder. <laughs> what they did bringing us into this world seemed like an impossible task, but Chris Columbus, he just really did an incredible job, but also casting the kids was so essential. Their performances aren't incredible in this movie, but they got great going on, but I think just going to Hogwarts the first time on the Hogwarts Express platform and platform nine and three quarters. It's just, it's untouchable in terms of that experience the first time you watch this movie. So I'm, I'm putting it pretty high at number four on my list. Great pick, man. Thanks. Appreciate so, it. So so your four is my eight and my eight is your four. Oh yeah, we flip flopped. Yeah. I guess that's personality differences there. <laughs> was, that, was that like Gemini, the opposite <laughs> sides? You're, you're such a Sagittarius. <laughs> 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 Alright, Anthony, what do you got for number three? Number three, we were getting into the big time. Yeah, we're here. getting Ooh, into top it three. Now. Oh yeah, Whew. big Ooh, leagues. Don't big mess leagues. up. Don't mess up, bro. Half Blood Prince. Nice. I think Half Blood Prince, even though there is not enough Tom Riddle for my taste and my liking, you can't deny the production, the cinematography. They did a bleach bypass in the film, which makes it have that desaturated, silvery, glowy quality. Spielberg does that with his films, so that's why you'll see like highlights kind of glow. It's really beautiful, really stunning. I think Draco's role in this is fantastic. I think just the, the score is much improved by Nicholas Hooper. I like this one a lot more. I love Dumbledore and Harry having a lot more screen time together than most they've had in any movie. And all in all, I think the approach, the direction, uh, the production design, uh, all of it is just really fantastic. I like the darker tone. I think they did a great job with the Death Eaters. Um, and I like how they open with that scene of the attacks. The attack on the bridge, the Muggle Bridge. I would have liked to see the minister talk to um, the Prime Minister of England. I think that would have been cool, but I guess I can see why I don't need to have that in. But all in all, I think it's a, a standout for the entire franchise. Yeah, I agree. And obviously they cut the most exciting part of the book, the battle, which is unfortunate. Yeah. The battle of the Death Eaters against the students in Order of the Phoenix at Hogwarts while Harry and Dumbledore are at the cave. But, you know, they. I think they try to supplement that with that action sequence at the borough, which I don't love that scene. I don't like that That's scene. That's my least either. favorite yeah. scene in this entire movie. I love this movie to death, but that scene, every time I watch it, I'm like, this is pretty stupid. Yeah. I Especially also, yeah. when they're watching their burning borough, and it's like, just your magic. Just make, <laughs> put the fire out. What's the big deal here? What are you guys waiting for? <laughs> but, um, and also, I think that they avoided the battle at the end. I think they just wanted to double down on the grief of Dumbledore's death, maybe. But I still would have liked to see the battle for sure. And and how he used the Felix Felicis to help everyone evade death in that battle. Because they, all, they all had a little used, bit. They had a little bit to, to be lucky for like that one hour window. But I do the Felix scene is great with Radcliffe. Pinces. Super funny. I think that uh, I think it's a great movie, all in all. You got anything to say about that? I, all, all my criticisms on this movie come in the first two-thirds of the film. Because I do think the back third of the movie is is what holds it up. It's what doesn't put it at eighth place for me. Um, I think at its core, no disrespect, I think Half-Blood Prince taken. is just the most surface level Harry Potter movie we have. I don't think there's a lot of character development outside of, like you said, Dumbledore and Harry's relationship, which I do love watching. Um, it kind of pains me that Hermione kind of took a back seat in this movie and Ron, we explored his love life a little bit, but again, he kind of took a back seat. Um, it's, we're too focused in this movie on what is a Horcrux and where did Voldemort come from? And I think even that wasn't fleshed out nearly enough for me to like have this like level of rewarding feeling moving into Deathly Hallows part one and part two. Um, and I know all this is a hot take, by the way. I feel, I feel disrespected. <laughs> oh, however, <laughs> however, in the book, Her Ron and Hermione take a back seat because Dumbledore makes them prefects. So in the book, oh, they're, yeah. prefects. they're not doing You're a lot right. of stuff with okay. Harry because he needed to isolate Harry from them. They're technically take a back seat in this movie together, whereas in Chamber of Secrets, Hermione takes a back seat in that movie, and then in Prisoner of Azkaban, Ron takes the back seat yeah. in that movie. So they flip flop, but then in this one, they both take a back seat. Mm -hmm. So you under you understand like Ron and and Hermione are their least exciting and entertaining yeah. in all the movies for sure. I agree with that for sure. Well, I think Ron and Lavender are hilarious. Yeah, they're, they're they nail the relationships. Yeah. The relationships are really good in this. I and think, then the the kid who's obsessed with Hermione. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's his name? I can't uh, remember. Uh, freaking 
He's whatever. Yeah, it's yeah. not important. <laughs> but there are some other huge cons missing. Like Snape is the the Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher. We don't get a single class of them as the as mm-hmm. the teacher, the professor of that that he's always wanted to be. There's not. There's actually not that much Snape in this movie. Of course, we would wish to see more Tom Tom Riddle, more Voldemort. You know the the memories of how he got the the how he was working at Borgen and Burt's. And then but I do think the flashbacks are great. The flashback great with job. the young they Tom are. is that kid did a great job. And the cave scene's so epic. Yeah, the inferi yeah. in the cave is incredible. Yeah. So I think that this is a really well made movie, but I under- I respect it's top three for you. That's pretty great. Yeah. That's I cool. I mean, from a production standpoint, you can't say anything bad about it. And then Dumbledore's it's, it's death. Fan- like, Snape oh. murdering Dumbledore. Oh my god. It's tragic. Listen to really Dumbledore's is. farewell at the gym sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Severus. Please. <laughs> Stop. It's Dumbledore's best movie, hands uh, down. Yeah. He's got the more screen time that he has in all the movies here. Yeah. He became a boss in this one. <laughs> all right, George, what do you got for number three? Uh I have Order of the Phoenix at number three. Explain yourself. <laughs> <laughs> this is I, not number one, man. <laughs> <laughs> I will say it used to be a long time ago before I rewatched it. Um, <laughs> I absolutely love the dark tone of this movie. I'll say it again. I say it over and over again. We are really diving into what it means to be this chosen one character. We are seeing how it affects not only Harry, but the loved ones around him. The rise of the Order of the Phoenix is fun to watch. I love Gary Oldman as Sirius Black and the fact that he has his most screen time by far in this movie is brilliant. They're watching his relationship with Harry grow and watching what his death meant to Harry, I think was one of the most emotional scenes in all of Harry Potter right there with Dumbledore's death. I don't mind the the final battle. I understand what you guys say when it comes off a little campy, a little corny, but I think the the fact that it comes after an entire movie of watching Harry train these kids up to, you know, join Dumbledore's army and actually be effective in Dumbledore's army. I think that's a really rewarding scene, that final battle. It does come off campy. It does all come off corny a bit. But then you lead right into Dumbledore versus Voldemort, which it just blows my mind every time. It's that's it's, it's, uh, it's just incredible. Sick. It's so oh, epic. I wish that, that they could have made a movie about that one scene and I would have sat in the theaters four times to watch. It. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's an epic scene. Anthony always talks about it in a great way. He says that it shows you how powerful they are compared to normal wizards where like normal wizards can't do stuff no, like that. No, they would have gotten folded. But Voldemort and Dumbledore, they're out there together like making giant <laughs> w- well, water balls. And and fire dragons. And dragons. Yeah. Everyone, yeah. Else fire do, everyone else is doing Expelliarmus. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that, Dumbledore? <laughs> yeah, cool. <laughs> Pretty cool good. story, bro. <laughs> I, think, yeah, I, think, I think Ginny in that final battle said Reducto like 50 times. Reducto! <laughs> Reducto! 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 That's the only thing she was using. <laughs> that's a good point, but it, it is a sick battle. Yeah. And that's what – that that battle always got me excited for the Fantastic Beasts movies, eventually getting to Grindelwald and Dumbledore, but I don't know if we'll even ever get there. There's dragging that goddamn thing up. Yeah. They, they dueled, no, they dueled for a second in the new one, but yeah, it was but so it was like, overwhelming. It was, it was like for a they minute tops. They didn't even do anything, honestly. They're just a couple of wand flicks. Yeah. And that was it. I don't know if you saw it, but it was like, come on, guys. We need a little more. But the Dumbledore versus Voldemort is it's one of the best scenes in the franchise for sure. Yeah. So it's the only time we get it. Now, my number three Harry Potter ranking. And this is a movie that I think everyone has in their top three for sure. And it used to be number one for me for the longest time. But I've gone through and rewatched the entire series twice in the last two years. And I've put it down to number three, Prisoner of Azkaban. I think it's the best made Harry Potter movie. I think Alfonso Cuaron is the best director that we've gotten out of everyone in the franchise. And what he brought to the table was changing the tone entirely. And I love how he modernized the clothing of the kids and like having the kids have more fun with the way they wear their, they wear their wardrobes in, in the castle and stuff like that. The hair changes was fun. So he made Harry Potter cool and also brought a lot of realism to it and just incredible practical filmmaking and also long takes. Alfonso's handprint is all over this movie. It might be the most like personal to any of the directors for sure. You can see, you watch this movie, it's the Alfonso Cuaron movie. And especially coming off Children of Men making this was really cool to see a Mexican filmmaker come and lead the biggest movie in Hollywood for the year, which is incredible. I believe he did this first. Did he do this first? Yeah. Children of Men 2005. Sorry, yeah. sorry, you're right. Four. My bad. So he did E2 Mama Tambien in 99. Then, in 99. Oh, Children of Men was 2006. 2005. Or, it might be 2006. Either way, it's it was after, after, it's after yeah, Prison Rashman. Prison. Thanks for correcting me. So it's really, but it's still really cool to see a Mexican filmmaker come and make the biggest movie of the year for the biggest movie studio in Hollywood, which is incredible. But I think 2006. Nice. Oh, job. you nailed it. You got it. But I, so, I think someone's going to unsubscribe <laughs> because of that mistake. <laughs> Save us, man. You saved us. It's also really funny, really terrifying, too. We have the werewolf sequences, the Incredible characters with Remus Lupin coming in is is 
phenomenal. He's a fan favorite for sure. I adore this movie so much. It might be my most watched of the franchise. I think it's the most the most well made. But I think for me, I'm putting it number three for my favorites, which is still high praise in my opinion. Great take, man. Great take. And it's the last one that John Williams did, and it shows mm-hmm. you that he really would have adapted to the changing tone of the franchise oh, yeah. because he went more hip, he went more jazzy with this with this music and lots of new tones and themes that we heard as opposed to the first two, which are really similar musically. Now, to bounce off that, I'm just going to move into my second pick, which is Azkaban. Nice. Because I'm going to second everything you said. I think it's the more most artistic film of the franchise. It's the most creative. Alfonso is one of my all-time favorite directors. Um, to see him make this movie, uh, I think Azkaban was really important for the franchise to change things up and show a new uh, facet to the world that J.K. created. Uh, I think that it's actually probably the most important film of the franchise outside of the first one working, because if the first one doesn't work, none of them come out. But this one, I think, paved the way for uh, it becoming more artistic and creative with the filmmaking. And the actors did a, the kids did a much better job. Like They were coming into their own as actors. I think the cinematography, the score, I like the dark blue desaturated color palette. It looks beautiful. The Dementors are amazing to see them in this film. Uh, The idea of Azkaban. Gary Oldman, um, just great casting all around. Um, I think it's just a phenomenal movie. It's probably the second most watched for me out of all the films is Azkaban. And I think it's a very special movie. We'll just move right into me because that's my number two as well. (laughs) Um, so just to echo everything you guys said, I think there are so many incredible emotional character moments in this movie between Harry and Hermione, between Harry and Lupin, and Harry and Sirius. There's so much going on in this movie that kind of pushes us towards Goblet of Fire and into that back half of the franchise when our characters are really maturing. And I think Alfonso Cuaron did such a brilliant job just taking Harry Potter to that next level. If any... Harry Potter director should have been nominated for best director. For sure, it's yeah, for sure. Cavron, for Prisoner of Azkaban, I. It's amazing he didn't get nominated. It's yeah. insane. It's 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 my number two, but I will say, if any Harry Potter movie were to have been nominated for best picture, I would have wanted it to be Prisoner of Azkaban. I know that may not make sense, but I completely agree. It's the best, it's the best made agree. of them all. Yeah, completely I just think from agree. a film yeah. like from a technical aspect, and you know, speaking objectively about film, I think it is the best made Harry Potter film. Which is why our lists are great because none of us put it first, even though we all agree it's the best one. Yeah. Best made. Yeah. It's pretty, yeah. It's pretty great. That's I why think it's easy it's to recognize it. It's, you can easily recognize, oh, this is the most impressive piece of storytelling they've done. For yeah. sure. Let's not forget about the Marauders map. Yeah. Introducing yes. this movie as well as the twins are great. Expecto it's, it's really Patrona! <laughs> <laughs> he was his, they were his friends. <laughs> he was their friend. He was their friend. <laughs> Hogsmeade going to Hogsmeade Village. That movie also used to frighten me yeah it's scary the whole sequence of harry leaving his aunt and uncles and getting on the bus sitting on the curb oh, yeah. watching Night as the bus, wolf yeah. comes toward that used yeah. to frighten me as a kid the grim were introduced to divination with uh, professor trelawney it's just such a fun movie quidditch is cool it's a very short sequence we don't even mm-hmm. see the full match but quidditch is in this movie unfortunately they, they play a whole season in the books yeah. but the quidditch is great in this but also to get some more veteran uk actors emma thompson and gary oldman to just completely just adding more stackness to the cast and, and stacking it uh, up. David Thewlis for Yeah, David Thewlis. Lupin. Yeah, amazing actors. So yeah, we have a great uh, father figure for Harry introduced in this movie. And it's just a per- it's per- it's a perfect movie, you can yeah. say, in a lot it of is. ways. It really yeah. is. It's incredible. It's uh, maybe one of the most scary of them all, too. I have to mention Harry riding Buckbeak because that's, yeah. that's oh, yeah. one of my, fav- yeah. Yeah. One of my favorite do, 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 do. scenes in Harry Potter. One of the best oh, yeah. songs that John Williams created, yes. too, for the franchise. Yeah. It's incredible. So many incredible moments. And the time travel. Yeah, time travel. Time travel. Going back in time. Maybe this is my number one. I know, right? Right? When did she get here? We're all, How did she, when did she come in? <laughs> uh, we should all just, I, we all might want to rechange our rankings now. <laughs> no, no, it, it the is, more we yeah, talk yeah, about yeah, it, yeah, now, the better. No, but it is. I think Asking Man is the best movie. Yeah, it's the best. It it's is. the best. Hands movie. down. Yeah. It's a movie. It's a movie. <laughs> the best part about this movie <laughs> is it feels like a movie. <laughs> I just want George is a huge done. Harry Styles fan. Yes. Did, what, George, did Harry Styles spit on Chris Pine? What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> no comment. No, no comment. comment. The video looks like it, but I guess not. <laughs> it appears to be. <laughs> <laughs> Let's test it out. Anthony, you do the exact same thing. I'll spit thing. on you. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Oh, man. To my number two on my Harry Potter rankings is Half-Blood Prince. This was the, my number one for a while after Yeah, I remember Azkaban. you used to say it for years. It and then I, I recently rewatched them all again this year. And I'm moving Half-Blood Prince down to number two. 
I still think it's an incredible movie. I love it so much. It's just so artistic and beautifully filmed and shot. Like we said, it's the best looking movie of them all. Really, really well made. I think Draco's storyline here is really strong because he's such a great character but you don't really get much of him after Chamber of Secrets in the movies in general. He's kind of silly in Order of the Phoenix. He's part of like Umbridge's like gang to get yeah, all the troublemakers. Yeah, I'm not a fan of those scenes of them like sneaking up, sneaking hardly around. Hardly in yeah. Goblet of Fire. He's hardly in Azkaban. Just here and there. But this movie, Draco Malfoy, really shines and stands out as a character. Tom Felton did Tom a great Felton's job. Tom Felton's a great actor. Yeah. He did a tremendous job in this movie. And you really felt a dual storyline going on between him and Harry Potter in this movie even though their their plots don't really connect very often they they have different objectives in their story goals here in the movie but I really think that Draco is one of the greatest strengths of this movie same thing with Snape he has a lot of screen time in this movie but also this movie's as dark as it is and as dreary as people think it is it's also very funny and cheerful at times. I think Slughorn's a tremendous character. Dumbledore is very silly and fun and charming. This Aragog, movie well. <laughs> farewell, Aragog, <laughs> king of the Arachne. <laughs> Though the body will decay, <laughs> the spirit <laughs> will linger <laughs> on. Don't worry, I got it. <laughs> um, I think it's really touching as well. <laughs> Jesus, he's like only I can quote Slughorn. <laughs> you mumbled it out. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I'm just having fun, man. <laughs> Can I just have some fun? I'm sorry. You're having a great time. You look great, too. But I think there's so much going on, especially with the memories and Harry getting the memory from Slughorn and how the real antagonist of this movie, it's very it's very deep. It's not like an, there's no villain in the, ep, in the film, really. The villain is guilt. It's Slughorn's guilt is the antagonist of the film because Harry's goal is obtaining, obtaining the correct memory from Slughorn. Voldemort's not really in this movie. Obviously, the fo the forces of dark are growing outside Draco's of Hogwarts. Draco's an antagonist. Draco's not an antagonist to Harry Potter. He's not thwarting Harry's goals in any way in this film. Okay, I guess. So yeah. they have a completely yeah. opposite. They're separate plots. So ha Draco's, he might seem like the antagonist of the movie, but he's not. He's not the villain in this movie. He's actually the good guy. He, he's, he's, you know, he's corrupted. Yeah. He doesn't want to die. The antagonist of this movie is guilt, which I think is a very deep theme and really important and I think interesting to have as a villain in a movie this is very wise <laughs> <laughs> all right <Lupin. laughs> what you fear is fear itself <laughs> all right want to move on to number one yeah sure for number one if you guys haven't guessed yet i have harry potter and the sorcerer's stone i think it is for me going to the theaters i still remember clearly as a kid and just being inserted into the world of my imagination for the first time I think it's the movie where you most relate to Harry as a person. You see the kid from the cupboard under the stairs. Um, I love how the first act of the movie, there's this mystery about him. He just seems like a normal kid. And then all of a sudden, we're put into this magical world. And we're learning everything with Harry. Like I said earlier, we are the surrogate audience. We're with Harry along the way. I think the practical filmmaking is astounding. It's super simple. Some of the CGI isn't up to snuff. They actually rushed it for a release date. That's why Chamber has much better CGI than um, Sorcerers. Like the troll and Sorcerers. Yeah, the troll doesn't yeah, hold up that Columbus well. hates it, actually, because of this. they had to get it out as fast as possible. But I think not just casting the kids, and they did the best they could for being the first time in a movie, being 10 years old, but the cast of the other actors is really terrific. Like all these heavy, heavy hitters from the UK, Richard Harris as Dumbledore. And I think that this book... And this movie are just a really special piece of narrative fiction that we've gotten over the last hundred years. I think the movie is flat out perfect from start to finish. It's by far the one I've watched the most. It's the movie that makes me feel like I'm at Hogwarts when I watch it. And I don't think that I can ever put another movie above it. Wow, it's really, really great anecdote about this film. Thanks, it's, man. It's, it was very personal. It really came from the heart. Yeah, man. It's a great movie. Yeah. It's incredible. And, you know, for introducing us to a world, they did an incredible job, and especially how much practical filmmaking there is. Oh, yeah. It's great. So respect the hell and out of that. There, would, there, there would be no film uh, There would be no film franchise without this one working. Yeah, you know? it's true. It seemed like an, almost an impossible movie to make. Mm -hmm. Like, you could see so many directors just not nailing this and making a bad Spielberg franchise. Pitch, yeah. Spielberg pitched it. Um, All CGI, right? As being CGI. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Thank yeah, God. Yeah, like did. Tintin. Thank God. That would have, I would not have enjoyed that. Yeah. So glad Chris got it. George, what do you got for number one? My number one, probably the cliche pick. I have Deathly Hallows Part Two. That's, Whoa, not, cliche. that's not cliche. Azkaban's yeah. the cliche number yeah, one. Yeah, Azkaban's cliche. Yeah. I got one and two, so I'm cliched out. I think Deathly Hallows Part Two is one of the best conclusions TV movies we've ever seen. I think 
the fact that it just jumps right into the story um it's just, it's just this massive grand scale conclusion to this eight, eight movie saga um i think every character was fleshed out dissected brilliantly in this movie everyone got their ending they either deserved or the ending we expected but it was just done very beautifully um it's not only what i think is the best harry potter movie it's one of my favorite movies ever it's probably in my top 15 i could watch it over and over and over again the 19 years later just constantly just puts a tear to my eye every time harry walks through the forbidden yes. forest yeah. so good. and sees lupin Sirius, and his parents i cry like a baby it is such a beautiful conclusion to one of my favorite trilogies. And I think Radcliffe, uh, franchises. yeah, I think Radcliffe walking out into the in front of the Death Eaters, and he's. I think this is the best acting he did in the whole franchise. Just that look he has of he doesn't say anything, but it's right before he dies. But I think just his face, he he acted that scene so well. I think it's the most impressive thing he did in the entire film. He's incredible in this movie. Yeah. But yeah, walking out to your death knowing you're going to die. It's like not many characters have had to do that in a movie, yeah. but I think Radcliffe really shines this movie. I think it's an amazing movie too, you know? I don't have a top three, but I mean, Deathly Hallows Part 2, what an achievement and what an ending to a film. Yeah. I mean, franchise. Yeah, yeah. It was great. My was number great. one pick. Look at how happy he looks. <laughs> <laughs> you look at him. He like he is, he's just like smiling, like sat back, cross his legs. So, okay, <laughs> let's get to the real, the real one. number one, guys. <laughs> Chamber of Secrets. Hot take is my favorite Harry Potter movie. I think it encapsulates everything you brought up about Sorcerer's Stone being your number one. But it's improved in every single way in terms of the acting, the set design, the production design. Not to mention having the practical effects of the basilisk and the set design and sets of the chamber of secrets you brought up earlier is one of the best sets in the might be the best set in the entire franchise is chamber of secrets they really built the shit out of that set <laughs> <laughs> having a real basilisk great i, I gotta say diagon alley is number one it's pretty incredible I, yeah it's up there for sure um and also gilderoy lockhart's another great character but this movie chamber of secrets has everything that you want in a harry potter movie is in this and it's done the best. I think that the Quidditch is phenomenal in this movie. It doesn't hold up to like, I wish Alfonso did more Quidditch in Prisoner of Azkaban because I think it looked the best, but there's such a short sequence before the Dementors come out. But the Quidditch, we have a great match with, against Slytherin. Also, a lot of Draco Malfoy in this movie as well. But I think just in terms of the filmmaking, this is John Williams' best score in the franchise. I think it's one of my favorite John Williams piece of music of all time oh, it's yeah. like the chamber 10. of secrets score that track is great this entire album plus yeah. fox the phoenix so it's got an incredible mystery incredible third act uh the kids the 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 real threat to the kids at hogwarts is the highest it is in the entire franchise outside of deathly hollows for sure yeah kids are actually getting attacked by some mysterious monster should we close the school no I keep it open <laughs> <laughs> keep it open a little longer we'll, we'll see how it goes we'll, we'll pie we'll play it by ear is right, anybody guys? dead yet <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point Hogwarts is ridiculous for the danger they put the children in but the danger is great I love Dobby he's one of my favorite characters in the entire franchise he's all over this movie as well this movie's hilarious it's, it's one of the scariest for sure some of the best characters as well but I think that Chamber just it's my favorite. It's my most rewatchable as well, and I, I love every second of it. And you got you're framed by Chamber yeah, of Secrets got, right now. Yeah, I got a Chamber of Secrets poster. Yeah. Plus, I mean, Aragog and the spiders. Follow the spiders. Ron is hilarious <laughs> in great. this yeah. movie. What's that mean? <laughs> Unfortunately, Hermione takes the back seat after she gets petrified, but she's able to figure out the mystery for the boys. But to then she out gets the to shine act. in the third one. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, exactly. That's why I said they flip flop. Where Ron is uh, put out of commission in the set in the third film, so oh, yeah. they switch their places. But I think this movie is just. Flat out perfect, and I think it has everything you want in a Harry Potter movie. Interesting pick. I can stand. I, I can see that. I think it's just a hot take as hell too. At the same yeah. time, it's, I think it's hot take. Come but at, I respect come it. At, come at I, me, I do, I do But God it. damn it, I respect it. <laughs> 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 but when you said uh, people are dying at Hogwarts and they don't close school, it's like Prisoner of Azkaban too. Oh, we have a serial killer, serious black on the loose. Let's we'll be fine. We're, we're not closing school. It'll be okay. He, it's like Jeffrey he Dahmer. The he, attacked the <laughs> he attacked the fat lady. Yeah, no big deal. No big deal. I just think for I think Sorcerer Stone has all of the legendary moments. You have you have the train. You have you're a wizard, Harry. You have all of Vanders, and that's just in the first half. You have the kids on the boats going up to Hogwarts, and you see the, that first image of Hogwarts on the cliffside with the water, with the lanterns, beautiful music, and then. The Hogwarts castle is just glowing from all the lights inside the windows. It's just so un unbelievable. And I think there's just so much in that film that 
when I think of Harry Potter, so many of my favorite moments and memories are in the first one. It's so underappreciated. It that really movie. is. It really yeah. is because I think it is the oldest and maybe because it has the least amount of CGI. Because the acting is the worst by yeah. the kids. But I mean, it's also. so good. It really is. I, I mean, you have you have the invisibility cloak. Yeah. I mean, walking around the the library with just the hand. Because they. So that's much. a great point. They hardly use the invisibility cloak in after any other that movies. Movie. Yeah. Do they and, even? They use it. He uses it in Prisoner of Azkaban. Chamber yeah. of Secrets. He doesn't use it at all. Doesn't use it. Fire. Goblet yeah. of fire. He busted out. But the not that much. Not enough though. Isn't that a deleted scene? No, doesn't he go to the uh, the library, the bad library? What's it called? The restricted the section. Restricted section of the library. For in Goblet of Fire. Isn't the Goblet of Fire? No, when he's trying to research the task in the water. Oh, no, 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 no. In the that's book, in the yeah, book. in the book. In, oh, okay. Yeah, Neville. So in the no, book, in the uh, M- Moody tells him, give, no, "Hey, no, Neville, help him out." Neville yeah. help him with the books because yeah, Neville's right, reading the book. So right, in the right, book, right. he wears. Yeah, he does that. He stays okay, up. Yeah. All, he falls asleep. Then Dobby wakes they him up. They just made it quicker. Yes. They made it quicker in the movie. So yeah, the invisibility cloaks only in Sorcerer's Stone. And then I mean, and then, and then you have the third act with the chess game and and the vines. Although we didn't have the potions, which would have been great, but. I think the final, the confrontation with the first scene with Voldemort is very scary. It's a great twist, um, and I just think all in all, there's in the Quid- the first Quidditch match to see is just so much fun. Learning about Quidditch, I think that there's so much exposition in the movie, but it never feels like exposition. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, you're right. So he's, yeah. he's showing us rather than just having characters explain oh, stuff. He's convincing me a little Getting bit. Getting an owl for the first higher. time. Going to Ollivander's. Still riding on the actual, nope, nope, actually, definitely not, definitely not. <laughs> just riding on the train. I think there's just so much in that movie where it's like, when I picture the world Harry Potter, it's so many scenes from the first one. That's a really great point, Anthony. Thanks, man. I'm not gonna move mine though. <laughs> maybe he's, next, he's tempted to. Maybe next year. <laughs> he's tempted to. Hey, I got Chamber number one, so it's pretty similar. But hey, Are I you, think everyone did a great. Uh, job he's like, hey, I'm almost as good as you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got Chamber number one. Is that good? That's cool, right? <laughs> <laughs> They're both in Anyways. my back half. <laughs> Anyways, that wraps our episode on Harry Potter rankings. George, thanks so much for joining us in studio for this episode. Thank you very much Plug for having your account. You have a new podcast. Yes, we just started a new podcast. Myself, Seth Moen Feroz, Tyler Whitmore, and uh, Cam Walsh. It's called Real Talk. Just talk movie news, any movie reviews we do. We do like a fun little game at the end, whether it's like a ranking or a draft or whatever. But we're filming episode five tomorrow, so you know we're about a month in, which is very exciting. We've gotten some pretty awesome reception so far from you know everyone that followed us on TikTok, coming over to YouTube and Apple and Spotify to listen to us. Um, and it's so, spelled yeah. Real Talk, R E E L T O K, like yes. Instagram Reels and TikTok put together Real or Talk, film Reels, yeah, movie yeah, Reels, real talk. movie oh, yeah, Reels, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then <laughs> so, you're so, such a so, yeah. social media. <laughs> so, I'm such an influencer. <laughs> <laughs> What's the <a> film Reel? <laughs> I feel like an idiot now. <laughs> uh, but yes, we're on Instagram, Twitter. Uh, what am I missing? TikTok, YouTube, Spotify, Apple, everywhere. Plus, your TikTok's wicked popular too. Yes, movies and stuff. Fourteen. I do still my own there. thing. Movies still, and stuff. Fourteen. <laughs> still, 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 got it. still got it. Still that. You gotta make a website. Trade, <laughs> trademark that shit. You should make T-shirts. I'd buy a T-shirt. Well, what? I'd buy a T-shirt. <laughs> movies and stuff. Fourteen. You, you just don't know. <laughs> and it's, it just says, if you know, you know. Yeah. <laughs> People have actually been asking me to make like film bro merch, but I don't know what that means really. Who yeah, knows we anymore. get called film bros yeah, a lot too. Yeah. all the time. Oh well, yeah, time. congratulations on your podcast Thank and, you. and the TikTok gentleman you're doing it with. Thank we wish you. you nothing but success and growth with your show. Just keep plugging away. I'm sure you'll get bigger and bigger. Thank Thanks you. for coming all the way to LA. You're in studio. You're yes. dressed up as Harry Potter. This was such a blast. Going all out. Yeah, we went all out. Thanks for <laughs> Thank tuning in to Raiders of the Lost Podcast. Become a patron for as little as $2 at patreon.com slash Raiders of the Lost Podcast. Take care, everybody. Goodbye, everyone. This episode of Raiders of the Lost Podcast was executive produced by our chosen one patrons. Luke Exelston, Tyler McFly, Darren Singleton, Anthony DeMeo, Becca Keen, Cody Moen, Benjamin Cook, Calvin Cam. And Lauren Smertz. Thank you for watching Raiders of the Lost Podcast. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button as well. Notifications for sure. Listen to the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, everywhere. You can listen to podcasts. And be sure to check out this other content we have on our YouTube channel.